Hey, this is Kyle Carver from Strong Dads. Strong Dads podcast would love to thank the Crimer's Beer House for coming alongside of us. The Crimer's Beer House was started in 1982 by the Crimer family, and since that time, they have definitely become a Cincinnati favorite. So if you're looking for an incredible meal in an incredible setting, definitely go down to Route 128 and check out the Crimer's Beer House. All right. Hey, guys, what is going on? It is a beautiful day out. Look at you. <laughs> We're sitting inside. I'm sitting here with Merle. We should be outside, I think. We, we should. We should do Man. a show outside. You know, that's an idea. That's a good Let's idea. Let's do that. Let's do that. I like we that. need to move out and do – we should do something like in your wood shop studio. Oh. We should do something out in the yard. We should do something maybe out by a lake somewhere. I'm ready. We need to move. The weather is starting to break. That's oh, right. Let's get out of this I, place. I think it's good. Anyways, you have a good Easter? We did, man. We had a great Easter. We did get outside. We we did a little fishing. We did man. ate some good stuff. Um, we mostly just sat outside. My dad was in a nursing home. We were able to go in, get him out, uh, take him with us. Awesome. Um, he had a good day. He was as honorary as ever, so that was fun. <laughs> so I had to tell you off air what he was doing. That's another story. <laughs> We love him for his honoriness. I don't know if it's going to do much to get him in heaven, but it makes us laugh. But that's <laughs> that's a whole other show. That's a whole other show. No, he's a good guy. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the uh, the, the kiddos. Uh, golly, my my sister has five kids. Ooh. My brother's got two and one in the oven, and then I got the two. So Easter was wild with the oh, yeah. uh, the Easter egg hunts. My mom did a little scavenger hunt for all the kids that can actually read. So. <laughs> So it was it was fun. It was a good time. So that's good. That yeah. is good to get everybody together. I know. Right. Plus, I know. with the weather in in our area of the world, yep. was you couldn't have it any better on an Easter. That's right. That's so it was right. Fantastic. Yeah. I hope you guys had a good Easter out there. The, the show we're we're recording on the the back end of the the Easter weekend. Yes. So. Yes. So what are we talking about? Anyway? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, today we got to figure yeah. out something. We got we got to have a show. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, we should. <laughs> Did yeah. you just get off work or what? I you, did. I did. Look, I'm a little flustered right you now. You look beat down, man. <laughs> Saving lives yeah, all night. It's 20, exhausting. 24 hours of uh, wild and exciting. So there you it, go. Was, it was good, though. All right. Good. Drink that coffee. Keep it going. <laughs> yes. But anyways, today, um, you know, the, the, the when we were discussing different topics and stuff, this idea came um, actually from my small group. Um, and this question was posed. Um, and I thought it was a really cool um, question that I think every man should ask themselves. And if put in certain situations, may get asked them, you know, and, and the, the question is, are you running, you know, to something or are you running away from something? Hmm. And, and, and I think the conversation today hopefully will, will put us in a good place to understand the benefits of maybe both situations, running away from something and running to something. Uh, and then maybe on the flip side of that, maybe maybe the negatives of running away from certain things in our life that that we you know maybe shouldn't be running away from we talk all the time on this yeah. show about you know the comfort and and and, and finding fi finding you, you happiness in those comfort and sometimes you know it's good to be put outside of our comfort zone especially as a man we sh we need to be challenged sometimes in that way so hopefully that conversation you know kind of kind of rolls into that so right yeah Th okay this is going to be good so we'll have a lot of different opportunities so let let me ask you then so have you ever found yourself just wanting to run away from something? Oh, boy. Um, like a little scared chicken? <laughs> <laughs> no, Merle. No, you man. I'm a man. You <laughs> I'm a man. I'm never running away from it. You know, I, when, when this question was posed, I started thinking of different things that, that I've had in my life that, that I've, I've been a part of, that I've done, um, that I just I wanted to get away from, that I needed to move past, that I needed to... Um, kind of get rid of that in my life. And the, the one thing that kind of stood out, and, and we did a whole show on this, uh, was pornography. Mm. Um, it was a huge struggle for me in my life for the longest time. Um, and, and, and then, you know, moving into getting married, I realized the, the damage that does for, for Jenny and I. Yeah. And then, you know, taking a step further, then I start having kids, and I'm like, holy cow, like this is destruction. I mean, this, is, this will destroy my marriage and my family if I don't, yeah, get my act together, and and it was a, a decision that I made, uh, a very difficult decision to make to be like, I'm done with this. Th this mm. is, this is I have to move past this. I can't be the man that I want to be, the dad that I want to be. Yeah, if I have this junk in my life, so it was a decision I made. Uh, I had accountability. I had guys that you know, my small group guys that came alongside of me, um, and, and we tackled it together. And and you know, it's no longer. No, I'm not going to say it's not a, a struggle in the sense that you know it's something that's always. I think every man has those thoughts, um, but it's a conscious decision every day. I wake up. I'm not doing that. I'm not going right, back to that right. life. 
Um, so that, that would be definitely something, something that I wanted to get rid of that I couldn't stand in my life. I had to get rid of it. So that was, uh, that, that, that was for so me. So that was something you were running away from. And so I guess the, you know, <clears throat> we're going to have this discussion, but so running away from what did you run to? You know uh, what I mean? Like if yeah. I'm going to run away, I, I need to arrive somewhere. Yeah, that's, so yeah. where, uh, where did you, what, what gave you the goal to run to? Well, I, I knew I had to run to and pursue my wife in a different yeah. way. Um, and, and that that was something that I just saw the writing on the wall. I saw what my actions were doing and how they directly, you know, affected my marriage. And yeah. the the way I viewed my wife, the way that I viewed my kids, um, it, 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 it changed everything. It was a game changer for me because now – now there, there was no there's no additional distractions for me yeah. in that sense obviously there's distractions for for everything but you know that, that when i got rid of that in my life i was able to truly hone in and focus on just on my wife mm. and, and see her for who she really is so. yeah yeah good good stuff all right so that's your example so i, I know just like always what's what did you run away from Merle? <laughs> well as you said i'm a man i don't run away from nothing <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I I remember I've shared a little bit of this at different times on the show but um, going into college um, you know I went to college as that guy that did not really know why he was going to college he just didn't I, I didn't know what I was going to but I didn't um, I, I wanted to stay away from what I had and that was basically you know I was working in my dad's shop and stuff like that or I was working at a grocery store those were the things and I was like well I don't want to do this these things for a living sure just because it wasn't what my wiring um, and so I went to college and for two years I was miserable really I was miserable because I had no clue why I was there and so and I had to commute two hours a day, one hour there and one hour back. So mm -hmm. I lived out in a rural area and I would hop in the car at 6.30 in the morning or whatever and drive for an hour for my eight o'clock classes, um, five days a week. Um, and I can't tell you how many times I had conversations with, I would quit this right now. If There's a I conversation had, you're having with yourself. With myself. Yeah. Like what would it take for me to just quit right now, just quit school? I hate this drive. I don't even know why I'm going to this place. <laughs> and I remember thinking, man, if somebody offered me a job, like just paid whatever, you know, I'd be like, oh, I'm gone. I'm gone, you know, because yeah. <laughs> I was I hated it. And it was just um, I wanted to run away from it. And uh, it just, you know, it, it drug me down. It, it just kind of beat on me. I think the one thing I did really well during those two years was I didn't have a lot of free time because I worked 25 to 30 hours a week. But any time that I had a weekend night or whatever, I was out partying pretty hard. Yeah. It was like, well, at least I'm good at this. Let's go All have right. some fun. You know? <laughs> now, now, was the, the, the college thing, was that something that, that you kind of put on yourself? Or was that something that your parents kind of... That yeah, was 100% me. My parents even questioned, why are you doing it? Um, but I didn't know what else to do. Like, I didn't have any other direction. Okay. And I was that guy who was... I was good at uh, a lot of things, but not great at anything kind of yeah. thing. You know? And I was like... I don't know what direction to go hmm. and so uh, kind of my philosophy was well at least i need to start in college at least i can get the basics going at least i won't lose ground when sure. i finally do discover and if college is part of what i need at least i won't be behind and i think in hindsight that actually worked for me okay um you know because i i did finally discover sure um and and get where i needed to go but man for two years i was so ready to quit I yeah. was done with it. So, hmm. and, and I'll tell you that that comes out of grind, right? You're just sure. how much longer. So anyway, that's kind of my deal, but we're going to get into a little bit more. Let's thank a few sponsors first and then we'll get into that. Definitely. Uh, definitely. Our, I gotta stop saying definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Have you? Did you go back since I, I pointed did, that yeah. out? I, and now, now I'm like, it's like when it, when someone's like, oh, watch that teacher. He says definitely a lot, and then all of a sudden that's all you notice. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, strong dads. We would love to thank. Crimer's Beer House. Oh, definitely. We want to thank Crimer's Beer House. Crimer's Beer House for coming alongside of us. They are located down on Route 128 in Cleese, Ohio. Yes. For sure, you should go down there and check them out. They have an incredible meal, uh, the incredible menu there. Now you got me a little flustered here. I, <laughs> I'm really consciously not trying to say definitely. They have a great menu and an incredible setting. So definitely go down on Route 128 and check them out. 
Well, I'll say you should definitely check out Casey's Outdoor Solutions. <laughs> we want to thank Casey's for coming alongside of us uh, for all the, the fantastic uh, work that they do for our community, but also uh, coming alongside what we do here at, at Strong Dads. I almost said I almost said rock solid. Yeah, you've done that a couple times. I know, times. I know. But uh, we want to thank those guys. So, again, uh, we also want to thank all you guys out there listening uh, as our show continues to grow and you guys uh, spread that word. Please share these shows. Uh, give us a five-star rating. Subscribe to the channels. Um, you know, this is part of the, the message that we hope has a benefit. And, um, and I, you know, I have guys that come in all the time say, well, you know, somebody said you should listen to this show that Hutch and Kyle did. And it was there to help them for some reason. They were yep. stuck in something, whatever the topic was. So anyway, you know, help, help a brother out, you know, yeah. help a brother out. Help a brother out. I like that. All right. Good. All right. So let, let's get into this a little bit. Um, as you said at the, the start, like every man's going to face an opportunity or the distress of, do I need to make a decision here? Yeah. Do, I, do I need to run in some direction? And so part of, I think, what you posed there at the beginning, am I going to run to something or am I going to run from something? And I think part of when I hear the idea of you running from something, my at least my brain first goes to, well, you're just trying to escape. You're just trying to get away from something. You don't want to own the work or you don't sure. want to do. You're just running away. You're running away from your problems. So. What is your thought with that? With that, is that where the conversation started from with you guys in your small group? You know, that's uh, um, yeah, I don't know. You know, and I don't know the full backstory uh, of everything that's kind of transpired that 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 brought up that that conversation. Um, but when you do pose a question like, "Are you running from something?" and, and I think naturally, for me at least, and, I, and you know, prior to the show, we talked a little bit about it. I think it is so true. We're all, we, we jump to the conclusion that, "Oh, it's quit being a sissy, dude." Like. Like you, you're, you don't run from something. Maybe fix what you got going on here. But yeah. sometimes there are situations where it's good to be running. Like you, sure. you, you had talked about that. You know, it's good to run from something. You know, I mean, especially in my world, I see addiction. I see a lot of addiction, and whether it be drugs, alcohol, whatever. Th those are the situations. Yeah, get the heck out of there. Like those are that we have to move past that. Run to something as well. But you have to run away from that yeah. for sure. So you know, I, I think the, the the question, am I running from this, um, isn't always you know necessarily brought in a, a good light. I think it sometimes can have that negative, like I'm just running away from something to, to get away. But yeah. I also think that there is positives to that. You, you're running away from something. You're moving past a stage in your life, a challenge in your life. So I definitely don't always want to, you know, as this conversation. As we talk about this conversation, I don't want it to, to always be seen as a negative light to be running mm -hmm. away from something. Yeah, so part of what I see with that, too, is um, I can get in trouble if I'm running from something, but I don't know what I'm running to. Yeah. Okay. And so there is probably a real purpose here in you taking the time to understand, okay, if I'm going to run away, what am I going to run to? Mm -hmm. Like you, you said perfectly before, like the pornography. And I said, well, what are you, you know, what were you running? What was attractive that you needed to run to? And that was, well, I had needed to pursue my wife, yeah. you know? So if we just run from something with no direction, chances are we're going to continue to be lost. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that is, that is the, the idea of the direction you would talk about that yeah. with, with you with, with college. Like, you, you just didn't really have a direction. Yeah. And I think the direction is so, so important when we, when we, you know, get into this conversation, because if you're just running to be running, yeah, like that's not going to be a good place. You're not going to enjoy running at all. Like, no. you know, when you run, there should be purpose behind why you're running. I'm running in a certain direction. I need to get where I'm going. I'm going starting at point A and I'm going to point B. Um, you know, even if that point A is a, it, it, it is a negative thing and I want to get away from it. You can't just run away from it just to, just to flee it. Like you need to have a direction. I, I, I can't just willy nilly get up one day and, and, and quit everything I'm doing because I think it's, it's a good idea, but have nowhere to go to. Yeah. Yeah. So I also think there's some emphasis here that we need to put on the word running. Yeah. Because when I think of running, you know, it takes energy and it's, and it's fast and it's explosive and usually there's emotion involved. Mm. So when you say I'm running to or running from, you're not strolling. You're not on a casual walk. <laughs> like you're putting it down. You're yeah. making a decision and you're going. Okay. Yeah. So there's, there's intention. When I, when I'm putting my running shoes on, 
it's with purpose. Yeah. Okay. So do you, the, do you still run? You still get out there? Man, you're killing me. You know what? I I, I actually I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> you're gonna start tomorrow, though, right? Uh, no, no. I actually, <laughs> I, I've been playing with it, but these knees, you know, I, I'm embarrassing is what I am when it comes to running. But there's something in me that does not let it die. But anyway, why do you get me off task like I'm this? I'm sorry. Get well, back well, to well, running. The, it, it made me think of it because I remember when I ran cross country, people were like. <laughs> Why do you even run? The only, oh, time, yeah. the only reason I yeah. run is because someone's either chasing me. Right, that's right. Like, you know, or I want to get somewhere really fast. And it yeah. just made me think of that. So I had to ask you, are you still running? Well, like right now, you know what they say? Like, if you're being chased by a bear, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than the guy that you're running Which, I, which I'm with. confident based and, off of and, your, and your... I know, like right now, I would really be screwed. I would be dinner. <laughs> 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 oh, got to love getting older, man. You got to love it. Okay, let's get back to the topic because oh, you're, yeah, yeah. you're really blowing this, yeah, yeah. okay? Um, so the whole idea of running and to and from, and so I think we want to have some conversation because as we go out and we, we look at the challenges that are in our life, whether they're in our marriage, whether they're at our workplace, mm -hmm. whether they're in our finances, you are going to find quick fixes everywhere, Okay. Um, whether it is, you know, um, if I just quit this job, I'll jump over here and I'll do this. And it looks all rosy when you first get it, get the idea in your head. And the next thing you know, you're in a deeper hole than when you were in the original hole. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's your wife. You're like, oh, we just, we fight or we bicker. There's, there's nagging going on all the time, you know? And so, you know, Linda and I talk about this all the time when we're working with couples that are going on a remarry. So they've been married, divorced, and now they're remarried. And, you know, the percentages of divorce rate are even higher on the second marriage. So, really? I did oh, not yeah. know that. First marriage is, you know, the 50% is kind of the standard. Second marriage is in the 70% divorce really? rate. And it's because... You know, now I'm bringing in all this other garbage that I maybe didn't deal with right the first time. Hmm. And the garbage can be, um, well, not to call our kids garbage, but now they are baggage from the first one. Sure. And, and how I treated my wife the first time and how I went about solving problems the first time. You know, if I didn't communicate well with my wife the first time and now I have a second one and I'm the one with a communication problem, I'm going to bring that same garbage mm. into this. And so it just it just compounds itself and she brings the same compounding problem. And so now the idea that the two of them get through this, the, the chances are stacked against them. It doesn't mean it can't work because we do see it work. That's part of what Lynn and I's job is when a couple comes mm -hmm. in. We kind of want to dust all this off and say, okay, wait. We need to clean up the past mess to make yeah. sure that moving forward is going to be solid. Man, I think that is, uh, you know, we, we didn't even really talk about this prior to the show, but I think that brings up a great, um, just a great point that, that if you're running away from something and you're moving in a different direction and you get to where you think you want to go, man, you can't have the same attitude. You can't have the same baggage that you that you you're running away from something yeah we see it all the time with guys at work that that want to leave a certain department to go to mm -hmm. a new department because they think it's going to be better the grass is going to be greener over there and then they get there and they still have that same mentality and that same mindset that they had in their previous department and they're like why is this department not good anymore right what what, what is going on in this one that that i thought i was i thought i was getting to something new and better but I'm still doing the same thing over and over and inspecting different results. And it's like, no, that's, that's insanity, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like you need to like adjust yourself, fix what you, what, why did you leave the first place? You know, you have to have reasons why you're leaving. So you left, you left a certain point, a certain thing in your life to go to something new, but you still kept the same mentality. Like you have to change that mentality. If you're trying to move towards something in that, in a different direction, you know, but when, when you talk about you know going back to that remarriage, like if you go back to that remarriage and you still have that same mindset that you had in the first marriage that that failed, it failed right. for a reason. Yeah. Probably selfishness played a part in that. And if you go back to that 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 marriage again, you know back back to the, your first partner, like if you still have that same mentality, that same selfish mentality, it's going to fail again. It's going to definitely add to the problems, right? Yeah. So, um, so anyway, we're going to go through. We want to help you guys out there listening. If you're kind of feeling you're in a spot of discomfort or you don't like where you're at we want to help actually identify 
Uh, take a little time to actually slow your brain down and think about where you are, what you're going through, and maybe some better steps to get through so that you can make the better decision of do I need to run from, do I need to run to, what am I running from, what am I going to run to, okay? So bear with us here. We're going to walk through this. I think there's some things that we need to consider. You need to really consider what your level is of discomfort or pain is mm. there there are some times when you you know you got this gnawing toothache I, that's kind of how i would describe my two years of commuting back and forth <laughs> to college it wasn't like you know oh this is i'm dying i can't do another minute but in my mind sometimes i'd make it out that way <laughs> like because right. i had all that time to think about how miserable i was and so i was sort of I became hyper focused on my discomfort when in reality I was strong, I was healthy, I had a good family, I had all these other good things going for me. I, I had the ability to go to college. Okay. Sure. So so there were so many good things, but I became so hyper focused on the small discomfort that it got big in my brain. And and that's something wait, we need to get a perspective grip on. Yeah. So how how legit and true is the pain or discomfort? All right. And so I need to put it in its perspective. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought. And again, maybe it is. Maybe it's like, hey, yeah. this is terrible. You know, it's destroying me and the people around me. I can't do it another day. All right. Good. Make the assessment. Sure. Which, which brings to the, to, to the next point of, of when, you, when you're when you making this, this, these decisions, if you're a single guy and you're, you're, you don't have a, 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 a wife and you don't have kids, that's one thing. But if you, you are a man that has a, a wife, you have kids – one or the other, um, man, you have to realize that your decisions do affect them as well. Yes. So in your discomfort, you know, in your, your, your you're not pleased with where you're at and you're, you're trying to move to something or move away from something, man, your, your kids are going to be a part of it. They're, they're yeah. going to be there with you. Your wife is going to be there with you. So what type of um, destruction or what type of mess are you going to leave in your trail because they're, they're going to be the ones that are going to be there, you know, right, right there with you as you move and progress in your life. Like they're, they're going to be there right there with you. And, and if, if where you're going, if you have no direction, if you have no vision to where you want to go, you're just going to be wayward and your kids are going to be falling right in your footsteps. Oh yeah. Like I see that when, you know, all of a sudden a guy, when I worked at the elementary school and all of a sudden, you know, dad was discontent in his job or whatever. And he's like, Hey, I'm taking this job over in California, which, you know, that could sound exciting and everything, but it was like, okay, no, wait, you're getting ready to move three kids. Mm -hmm. uh, moving kids is never easy right. into transitioning to school. So there's all these other factors that come into play. And again, it's not to say never do that. It's to say you, as a man, you need to own, okay, what am I holding up here? What's my responsibility? Mm. So you know, I, another thing I think is important, like, so how long have I been going through this? So sometimes we lose time perspective because of the level of pain of something. And so sometimes we have to ask, like, okay, how long have I actually been going through this, this pain, this discomfort? And then asking the question, how long do I foresee it going on? Hmm. Because a lot of times we're in discomfort and it's a season. You know, it's like so true. Well, you know, this really stinks, but honestly, you know, it's I know it's going to last for only six more months. Uh, <laughs> like my boys are in the military and they all the time get placed in situations that they don't like. You know, they're, they're deployed. They're away from their family and kids. And, you know, that they, they they work through the season like, OK, this is going to stink for the next three months. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to drive through this, but I can see light. And so, um, that's what we have to do. We have to understand the length. How long have I been going through this and how long do I foresee it going? And if either one of those are things that you can't manage, then maybe that's the time you go, okay, it's time to consider this. If I don't ever see this storm ending, okay. You maybe need to make a decision. There. And, how, and how important is that for our kids? Mm. Like if, if you don't have a time frame for, for, you know, that direction, that, that it's just an, it's a, it's a blank check. It's an, it's open-ended man. That's, that's hard for your kids. Yeah. Like kids need structure. I think kids need structure. And, 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 and I know it works really well for my kids, like giving them structure. Hey, we're going this time, this and this and this, um, man, when, when I went to medic school, like it was hard on my family. It was really hard on mm. Jenny. Like, but again, we had, we knew nine months, nine months from now, yeah. life will be different. 
maybe not better. There's still going to be new challenges that happen, right. but, but but we had a time frame. I'm going to put forth a crap ton of effort for these next nine months. I'm going to put forth that effort in studying, being away from you and the girls. But, man, Jenny knew after those nine months, things would go back to normal. Right, right. That's the season. Yep, absolutely. How about the, I think this is a question that we need to get, guys. This is just a flat-out, simple, basic question. Are you looking for an easy way out? Just plain and simple. You know, are you looking for an easy way out? If, if any guy out there says, oh, no, that's not how I roll. You know, I, well, you buy lottery tickets, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you you do. We, we all do these things like we just want to like, ah, wouldn't it just be cool if my load was lightened? And so sometimes we just are motivated by the easy way out. I see this with my kids, you know, <laughs> my youngest. I mean, that boy will take the easy way out on <laughs> homework every day around every corner and he ends up having to do the homework two and three times over because yeah. he shortcuts it but but in the moment the easy way seems the best way <laughs> this is so true i'm learning this right now with, with my woodworking golly there's some really easy joineries i can do i can just butt join them i can put them up and you know it'll probably be okay yeah <laughs> But like, come on, Kyle. Like, if I just do it right the first time, yeah. I actually put forth the effort and like do it the way it's intended and supposed to be done. It'll last so much longer. And I'm like, I'm learning that so much now with the woodworker as, as my skills progress. I'm learning that so much, and it is so stinking true, so yeah. true. Yeah, and I, I listen. I'm guilty, you know. Like, oh, I was, <laughs> yeah, I'm very much guilty, man. If I can see, oh, here's a shortcut, you know, I'm all about it. And it's and again, why? Because I want to get out of something. Yeah. And and it's part of our wiring. It's the the path of least resistance. Yes. And so that is kind of how we're all wired. Your body goes that way. Your body works like, well, what would be the easiest? What would take the least amount of energy? But it doesn't always mean it's the right way. Sure. So I I want to go to this next part and and so these last couple things here um you know strong dads is faith-based and we think that god needs to be part of all of our pictures uh, whether you like it or not he is <laughs> yeah. whether you believe in god or not he he's still there you know he's yeah. he's the creator of all and so i think a question that um that we need to think about when we're looking about running to or from will this or how will this honor god and when I say, when you, you know, when we talk about honoring God, like his purpose for me, he designed me, uh, the gifts that I have, the talents, the, the things that he's blessed me with, is it going to be just trashing those or is it going to be using them and honoring those? And so if, if all of a sudden I totally just scrap what I was doing because it was hard, but it was in, it was in my gifts. I was in, I was able to serve. I was doing whatever, um, that that I know I was designed to do, but now all of a sudden I'm just gonna go do something that's fun or different. Um, will that honor God? I'm not saying we shouldn't. Do it. I'm saying just you need to ask yourself the question: Is yeah. this gonna honor God, or is this gonna be like spitting in God's face? Yep. And and I think that that's that that could be if you're unsure of that, man. Ask him. Ask him. He'll reveal himself to you. Yeah. Like if you if you're like God, I don't know where you know what this is gonna look like. I want this to be a part of, of honoring you and obeying what you want for my life. Like, show me, man, he's going to show up. I, I, I truly believe in my heart of heart, he will show up hmm. um, because it's so easy, which is our next point here. It is so easy to get caught up. We, we talked the whole, basically our whole last show. We talked a lot about this of, of doing, you know, earthly desires and fleshly desires and falling into those traps because sometimes those are, you can touch those now. They're here right now. I can touch those. Or sometimes it's hard because we can't see God's face. We don't, we don't, we can't touch his hand and say, lead me. You know, I think when we get caught up in what the world says, sometimes that, that, that goes directly mm -hmm. contradicts what God wants for us. Directly yeah. contradicts. You know, if, if you're chasing after money, if, if what you're trying to run to is more money, man, that's not what God's calling us to. Could he be calling you to a position where you can make more money? Absolutely. But if your sole reason for moving to something is because of money, Man, I don't think that that's going to be falling falling suit with what God wants for you in your life. And I could be wrong. I'm not God by any stretch, but man, based off of what I know of His Word, like we, we should not be chasing after money. Like our our our, our goals and our, our what we want and our achievements in our life should not be to seek money. Yeah. Or seek money first. I I guess I right. should say. Yeah, and we could all be blessed with a lot of money. Absolutely. That, that, but money is not the ticket that we're looking for. Yeah. So I, I want to move into this this next section, and I think. 
the more that I, I wrote about this and thought about this, I thought, man, this is really where the turmoil comes from. Is your discomfort, is it a fleshly discomfort, kind of kind of like you were just saying, um, or is it a spiritual discomfort? Mm. Because if it's a fleshly discomfort, that just means like maybe um, I don't like how this feels. I'm not making enough money. Um, I don't like the nagging that I'm hearing. I'm not, you know, it, it's, it's my senses and I don't like the position I'm in. A spiritual discomfort when we talk about these kind of things, it's like, man, I just have some discontentment in my heart. Like, I don't feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. Th these are different sort of assessments. They're not based off of the physical pain or pleasure senses that we have. There's something inside of us that's got an unrest to it. Like, I just don't feel like I'm in the right place. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, us believers believe, that's the Holy Spirit working in us. That's the Holy Spirit tugging on us and pulling on us. When, when we talk about you know, like this intuition, this feeling of, I just felt like this wasn't the place for me, or I felt like I needed to move towards this. And sometimes there seems to be no good logical reason for it, like to, to the people on the outside, why would you do that? You're going to take a cut and pay. Why would you do this? Right. Why would you do that? And But in your heart, you're like, I don't know, man. Like I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. And so making a discernment between whether you are being spiritually moved or whether you are just being physically moved, because physical movement is not how we want to base um, our long-term progression in life. Right. Which I, I want to be very clear when it comes to spiritual, like discomfort, like God never promises us a, a life of, 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 pleasure all the time like yeah. you're gonna have discomfort so if you're in a time and you're struggling you're in a season where life is is tough that doesn't mean god has abandoned you that just mm -hmm. means he, he's putting you in a position that there's going to be growth on the other side and 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 if you get stuck in this thing th this thought process that everything with god is peaches and cream man <laughs> like god nowhere in scripture tells us that that's going to be the case so I, I think it's it's an important difference we have to discern is it is this you know that fleshly discomfort or is this a godly discomfort because they do look drastically different because there's fleshly discomforts that we fall into i think those are those are the times yes we should be running away from those right we, we need to find ourselves running towards trying to get into that spiritual discomfort where god is challenging us he's putting us in a position to to make decisions as men we're called to 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 make decisions to be strong to be leaders like and, and if you're stuck in this rut of always being you know just i'm okay with being comfortable like God's calling you for so much bigger, so yeah. much bigger. So I, in saying that, I'd say, have you in, even invited God into your problem? Yeah. You know, have you even brought God in? Are you even praying? Are you praying for God's will, not your will? Are mm. you praying? Are you talking to God? Are you leaning into how the Spirit is actually tugging and pulling on you? Because if you're only listening to the counsel outside of you that is of the flesh, then you're going to get fleshly advice. But if you're leaning into God and you, you want to be receptive to that, he's going to speak to you. Mm -hmm. So invite God into your problem. He wants to be part of it. For sure. And, you know, the, the, the last little, little thing you wrote down here, Merle, which I think is so true. Um, you know, I used, to, I, used to have, I used to have one of these little, these yeah. little bracelets. So what, what would Jesus do? <laughs> yeah, what would Jesus do? I mean, that's pretty cliche. It is. But it's like I, I, I run that filter a lot in my mm -hmm. head. Like, okay, right now, what would Jesus do? Here I am. I'm walking by the homeless man as I'm going down to the Reds game. I'm walking right by right now. What would Jesus do? Yeah. Oh, man. How, right. how convicted do you feel about <laughs> that? I know. Yeah. I know. But, you know, and, 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 but just think about that. You know, you're in the workplace. You know, what would Jesus do? Right here. Right here. Um, because that is the bar in yeah. terms of how we are to respond in these kind of situations. Obviously, when he took the cross, I can't think of a more physically discomfort, <laughs> <laughs> a pain, than what that whole process was. Yeah. But he, he that's not what he was chasing. He was chasing his father, mm. and that's why he went through the physical discomfort to be in the spiritual comfort of his father. So good. You know, it, we, we actually were just talking about this yesterday at work about trying to find like biblical examples for stuff in our life. You know, when we talk about, you know, running away from something, running towards something, um, man, Jonah, the, the belly of the whale. Oh, man, there, the, that's the fish, a great I guess. story. Uh, yeah, it's a great story because, man, 
Jonah, he wanted to get away from the Ninevites. Like he was like, I don't, I don't. He was wanna... supposed to go preach to them. Yeah, and he's, stuff. Like, he's like, I, I don't want to be around I don't these want people. It. <laughs> and you know, I heard a different insight one time about about Jonah. The that you know, when, when it came to you know going to the Ninevites, he just did not want to go. Right, he he didn't want nothing to do with it. And and then the storm came, and he's he, you know he's he's in the, the the bottom of the boat, and he's sleeping, and they come down and wake him up. Like, what are you doing, bro? And like, <laughs> you know, he's like, well, just throw me overboard. And the person that was was talking had a cool insight that. Jonah just did not want to go to the Ninevites. He's like, so just throw me over. I'll die instead of going yeah, there. And I, and I never thought of it like that. Like I just thought like he he had this purpose. You know, he was like, oh yeah, I know God really wants this for me in my life. But I think Jonah was just like, screw this. This is the easy way out. I'm jumping over. I, I would rather die than go talk to the Ninevites. <laughs> and right? then and then you know God's sense of humor. I think he was like, Haha, watch this, bro. <laughs> and he, he has a big fish come and eat him. And I think I think it's a great you know. I think it's a great depiction of where we want to be in our life. Like you're going to be put in positions where you're uncomfortable. The, the fleshly discomfort is there. And man, God's like, hold on a second, bro. I got you. And and, and then right. you get swallowed up by a whale. And then, and then the, the, the irony of all of it, he, he spits you back out on land. You're like, ah, oh, all right. Well, make no, disc- n- n- make no, uh, question about it. God can put some physical discomfort in your life. That, that yeah. is true. Yeah, like <laughs> he he can use physical discomfort to get you to look <laughs> at his spiritual uh, comfort that he wants you to seek. So, yeah, that's a great story with Jonah. Uh, definitely, that's a good read. I just got um, I read through that this week, and I was just like seeing myself like how how much do I resist God's will, mm. and even at the point of no. Like one of my jokes is we talk about um, where we want to retire at, and I'm always thinking about something uh, warmer. And I said, you know, the one thing I probably would fight God on is if he told me I had to do mission work in Alaska. I'd be like, no, no, I'm sorry. You know, I'm I'm not going there. I'm not going. It's too cold. Um, But again, Lord, hear me. I, I don't want to do that, but <laughs> well, yeah, because your kids, your 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 son's living in Hawaii. You were like, yeah, the, yeah, I, I like mean, polar opposites there. If he got stationed in Alaska, well, son, I'll see you in about five years. Whenever. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap things up. You know, it's really important that when you're going through difficult times and you don't know what direction to go, understand your emotions, Mm. you know, understand how you rationalize things, man, how you like make excuses. Come on, you got to dig in deep there because if you're going to be honest with yourself, you're going to see how you paint the picture that you want selfishly for yourself. So you got to understand your emotions. You got to understand how you rationalize things. You know, we always talk about seeking good counsel. Man, the counsel you seek should not be the dude who speaks from the flesh Mm. he needs to be the guy who's a little bit more well-rounded the guy who's going to bring in god's word and say hey well have you thought about this and you know he's he needs to be a guy of accountability telling you what you want to hear is not necessarily the right counsel in fact oftentimes it's the worst counsel so you when somebody uh when you see counsel tell me or give them permission Tell me what I don't want to hear. Go ahead. I need to hear your perspective. Tell me, challenge me, because I don't want to hear it, but I need to hear it. So go ahead and tell me. So you have to give people permission to speak into your life. If you're not willing to give them permission, they're going to offend you, all right? And that's because it's on you. And with, with that counsel, with, 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 with you know, rationalizing things and, and using emotions, if your counsel is doing the same thing, if your counsel is emotion emotionally based and, and irrational thought process, those are not people you want to see counsel from. Like we need to seek counsel from people who are in a good state, who can look from the outside, looking in, take emotions out of it and say, no, this is where you're just like you were saying, Merle, man, saying the things that, that hurt sometimes like, God, I didn't want to hear that, but I knew I needed to. Yeah. All right. So good stuff. Trust your gut instincts, your gut instincts, when your gut is pulling on you, that's the spirit working, you know, you're like, oh, I know what I should do, but I don't want to do that. That instinctive pull is something you need to definitely take note of. So you're for your challenge this week, you know, we all go in and out of these times. Um, there's, there's not a man out there that hasn't had a crossroads in his life, and that's mm-hmm. what these kinds of things are. They're crossroads. Which way are you going to go? What's the fork in the road? What are you going to do? All right. And so if you are in this, please listen to the show. If you see somebody that's in this, share the show with them. Be, yeah. be that person that's willing to give the good counsel because that's how you are the hands and feet of Christ. So our challenge is open your eyes, see where you see this situation, and see what you can do to lean into someone. Absolutely. Again, we really appreciate you guys. We really appreciate you listening to us, sharing our show. Um, five-star rating, like you're saying, at the man's show, beginning of the show. Um, thanks so much, Kramer's Beer House and uh, uh, Casey Outdoor Solutions for coming alongside of us. We really do appreciate you. It uh, makes things a lot easier uh, for rock-style families and, and strong dads to do what we're doing. Um, so really appreciate you guys. 
We good? We are good, brother. We are right. good. Go help a brother out. Go help a brother out and share this show. <laughs> Go out there and be some strong dads. You know, I've got a new word for you instead of definitely. It's absolutely. You know, absolutely go absolutely. out there and be some strong dad. How about or 100%? 100%. 100? I, I, I hear Can a lot I of guys say 100? say 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I heard like fire. Like people are saying like fire now. Like, oh, that oh, like, was real fire. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> We're done. We're done. We got to be done. <laughs> to welcome Casey's Outdoor Solutions as a new sponsor to our podcast. Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Casey's offers a wide selection of plants, landscaping materials, home and garden decor, and gifts for every occasion. Casey's is committed to providing exceptional service, a unique shopping experience, and value to every customer. Stop in and see what makes Casey's so unique. Located at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana, or call 812 537 3800. Let Casey's help you add beauty to your home.